Hi everyone, it's Paola. So today's video, we're going to be talking about covering everything about typography when it comes to using it in your projects, branding, logos, business, anything that you need to use type for fonts. So I'm going to hopefully help you along the way if you have no idea what you're doing with it or you want more insight into what's like trending right now or what's popular right now or really what's not working. In general, this is kind of my opinion, but also a lot of this is what's happening in design right now actively. So I thought I would share with you some pointers of how to use type in the right ways for what you want to do in design. So I'm very excited to share this all with you, but before we do that, I have a word from today's sponsor. Woohoo! So I'm excited to share with you that today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community with literally thousands of classes in all of these different creative fields that are perfect for you guys because you are all creative people. So with a membership on Skillshare, you'll be able to take classes in graphic design things like Photoshop tutorials, Illustrator tutorials, getting started in any thing under the sun with graphic design for sure. Photography, illustration, fine art and painting, there's so much to cover and it's all stuff that goes so in depth into the arts and I love it. So the class that I'm currently taking is digital illustration, learning to draw on Procreate, which you guys know I just got an iPad and I wanted to learn more and it's taught by Jerem Vogel. I am having so much fun on Skillshare just figuring out what I can learn. So it's literally for learning, there's, there's no ads, it's so easy to navigate and it has so much to offer and it's only under $10 a month for an annual subscription of it so I feel like it's totally worth it if you want to learn, especially if you're a graphic designer like I know you guys are watching this channel or want to get into it. So I have a link in the description and the first 1,000 people to click on that link and join will get a free trial to try out Skillshare. So that's in the description. Thank you so much Skillshare. Let's get back to the video. So typography. Let's talk about first what works. So what are these solid base typefaces that are really strong to get started in design. What are these ones that are commonly accepted, widely used, and people really seem to respond to them, especially in personal branding or business branding? The first one that I can think of, which is like everyone, <laughs> everyone's typeface, there's even a whole documentary about it, but basically it is Helvetica. Helvetica is a really strong choice because it is a very classic sans serif font and it's a really strong, easy to read typeface, nice variations, and it's just been the biggest thing. Honestly, if you guys want to know more about Helvetica, I really recommend watching the documentary. I watched it in a class, it was great. Check it out. But this is one that is definitely the go to sans serif typeface and that's because it works. It's very effective and a lot of people really gravitate toward it even when you don't have a designed designed design I like if you're not a designer and you're just, you know, a person walking down the street, you know nothing about any of this, that is something that a lot of people respond to. And a lot of these are also used very well digitally, not just physically, like printed or on real life things, but also online and in digital work. A lot of these translate very well and a lot of them are web fonts, so they're easy and legible just all across the board and easy to use. Futura is another one that is a great stylistic sans serif typeface. It's bold and it's used a lot, like you might remember it, it's in Wes Anderson movies all the time, uh, but yeah, that's another one that just works with a lot of different types of styles. And then for a serif one, we have something like Bodoni uh, or Baskerville, which is my favorite to use when I used when I use a simple serif one, um, because again, these ones are easy to use on all platforms and then also just very legible, very professional and very classic. So they're going to stick to a certain look and they're not going to waver. There's not going to be a trend that is going to overtake this because it's always going to be there. It's always going to work for your design. Um, but yeah, these are just like the basic ones that I would say to get you started if you don't know like where to even look at type. That's a great starting point, jumping off point for utilizing it in general. So now let's talk about what is bad, okay? And then we're going to get into like what's trending right now and what you should be working in if you want to take it to the next level, okay? So again, with the bad fonts, bad typefaces, I'm not just going to hate on typefaces because I think 
mm, okay, maybe I will. Maybe I actually am gonna hate on them. But I'm gonna start off by talking about one that gets a lot of hate and I don't think it actually deserves it in all the ways it gets it. And that one is Comic Sans. You guys know it, everyone knows it, I feel like. It's just a widely known font. Um, now it is on Instagram as one of the story fonts that you can use for your captions and stuff, and that caused a big uproar. And look, this one actually deserves a lot of hate in ways, but when it came out on Instagram, everyone started talking about it and saying, why do they put it up there? Like, no one wants to see it, no one wants their little captions to be that, moms are gonna use it, they're not gonna realize, like, how ugly it is and how much people hate it, blah blah blah. But the thing about Comic Sans is that people started saying, it's actually very easy to read. So it's very easy for dyslexic people um, and it's very accessible for everyone. And that is actually a very valid statement. It's easy to read and there's a reason that it is used everywhere. So it actually made sense why Instagram put it on their, on their thing, their stories. So it actually had a purpose or it has a purpose in general. Like it does make sense, but that doesn't mean that it's good because listen, there can be other fonts out there that are still easy to read and accessible and, you know, like for people who can't read easily. There's other options, I think. And like, let's stop using Comic Sans. Like, let's pick a different one that's easy to read. I don't find it good. And here's why. From a graphic design perspective, it doesn't look professional. It looks childish. You'll see it in a lot of things for kids specifically. But even for kids, it just it just looks cheesy in my opinion and it doesn't look like a very strong typeface when you look at it the next bad one is papyrus guys papyrus is so overused and i could forgive it if it were a little less jarring to my eyeballs but the look of it is so like sketchy and it almost looks like it's pixelated like the, the look of papyrus is like someone printed something on a very low quality image and it looks blurry almost to my eyes. I don't know, but it's overused. You'll see it in any shopping complex on any sign. It's just bad to look at. And guys, literally it's used in like Avatar, like the title of the movie Avatar. I'm like, why? It's not a good choice to go toward if you're trying to brand something, especially for a client or something. This is just not the choice you want to go for. But again, my opinion, I'm just telling you, it's not working. Designers are not enjoying it. Things with too much going on as well, like curls is a really bad option. It just looks cheesy. It looks like Disney font. Like it looks like it's trying to be something that's too cutesy. These are the types of things that just, they need more of an edge. They don't need to look like this cookie cutter commercialized vibe that they have. Um, it's just too much going on. And in my opinion, it's too complicated to look at. So I would definitely leave those type of typefaces out of here. And I know I feel like I have a lot of ones that I hate, but listen, I'm a designer and I like to hate on things. That's what we do, okay? So this will hopefully get you started in understanding what to look at and what to look for when you're looking at type or downloading something new or figuring out what you need for your project or project for a client or whatever it is you're working on. So with having this knowledge, let's talk about what's working right now a lot. Like, this, these trends and what's going on in type right now that people are really gravitating toward. Can we talk for a second about this little wavy squiggly type? Let's talk about it because I am obsessed with it. You guys, I love branding like this. When a brand has this, I find it so pleasing to look at and just so calming to look at in a way that it, I just gravitate toward it. And maybe it's just my personal style. You guys can tell me what you think of this type of style down below in the comments. But like, this is just something that my energy gravitates toward when it comes to typography. This is a very trendy thing right now. A lot of people are doing it. I think that it brings in elegance and it brings in boldness at the same time. And I think when it's utilized with other typefaces, it really works and i think yes it can be a little illegible um sometimes but i think maybe if that's the point of the project that can be interesting if you want to do it in a branding project you can think of a way to do it where it looks a little bit more legible or just like not a full word maybe if it was just a few letters i just think it's really strong and very aesthetically pleasing in my opinion and also this big bold typography is very very trendy and it's not gonna go away this is something that is a really really good way to treat type treating type in big bold like in your face styles is 
like really cool it I remember my professor said it was a really sexy way to treat type and I was like yes it actually is and I've always kept that in my head because <laughs> it's actually just a really smart way to utilize letters and whether they're skinny letters and you blow them up to make them look big or you're using you're using really bold you know slab serif whatever bold emboldened fonts and then you're putting them in a big way or you're like shrinking them down but they're still making that impact so it's definitely not going to go away because it just works for the eye and it's eye capturing and my last one that i think is really working if you want to use this type of typography is creating type that goes along with what the theme of the brand is or the project is so a lot of this type is working with like variables like different sizes of letters as the as the word goes or working with uh, a feeling an emotion like if something felt wavy you put you make it wavy or if something feels strong you make it strong so yes this is an idea that exists in graphic design already you know you want to consider feelings and you want to consider colors and emotion but you're really highlighting what the brand is within the typography and not so much relying on colors and pictures to get your point across so i think that can hopefully be helpful for you if you want to get started in a project like that especially for clients or whatever your next venture is okay so i hope that was helpful for you it was definitely helpful for me when i was researching stuff to kind of be reminded of what i can be doing with typography and there's so much out there there's so much inspiration out there like on pinterest as i say i always go on pinterest for type inspiration but yeah definitely check out the links below i've linked resources and stuff and also the link to skillshare to sign up is down there so uh yeah that was all i have for you today if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and also comment what you guys want to see if you want more on typography if you want more on like getting started in your projects and like with clients or whatever you're working on let me know and i will do that also my patreon is linked below as always we have the type club if you're interested in typography that's down below check it out and i will see you in my next one bye don't you just love a good conversation about something you love I never stop talking. I love design.